Hello there and welcome to the Excel Off The Grid YouTube channel. In this video, we're looking at five tips and tricks for working smarter when adding custom columns inside Power Query. So make sure you download the example file and work along. There's a link in the descriptions box below. Once you've done that, if you're ready, let's get started. In Power Query, we have the coalesce operator, which is represented by two question marks. This operator returns the first non-null value. So if we have a lot of null values in our columns, it can make things much easier for us. Here in Power Query, we have two columns containing numbers, round one and round two. You'll notice that some of these values are null. This is when somebody didn't even attempt round one or round two, therefore they didn't have a score. Now let's suggest that we want to add round one and round two together to get a total score. If we go to add column and custom column, this now displays the custom column dialog box. In here, we're going to give our first column the name of problem. And then the calculation that we want to perform is round one plus round two. I'll then click OK. And you'll now notice the issue. Any time that we calculate using null, it doesn't treat null as zero. It always returns null. This is where we can use the coalesce operator. I'll add another custom column and let's call this one solution. And this time we're going to say that we want opening bracket round one, and if that is null, we want to return zero. So that is the purpose of the double question mark. Here, if round one contains null, it will return zero. But if round one does not contain null, it will return the value from round one. I'll close the bracket. I'll then do the same for round two. So we want round two, but if that is null, we want to return zero. I'll close the bracket, I'll click OK, and now we get the correct values. And that is the coalesce operator. Sometimes we may be working with values which will naturally create errors if we try to calculate on them. But by using the try and otherwise combination, we can handle those errors in the right way. Here in Power Query, we have two columns of values for round one and round two. You'll notice that there are two instances where those individuals have been disqualified. How can we handle this when we want to add the scores together? I'll go to add column and custom column. Again, we're going to call this problem. And we want to use round one plus round two. And then I'll click OK. You'll notice that if both of those values are numbers, it returns a number. However, if either of those values contains a text value, it will return an error. If we click on the white space, it tells us we cannot apply operator plus two types number and text. So how can we handle this scenario? I'll go back to custom column. I'll create a column called solution. And this time we are going to use the try and otherwise combination. I'll start with try, it turns blue because it is a keyword. And we want to try using round one plus round two. Now we know that this will cause an error. Therefore, we get to use the otherwise keyword. That means that if our round one plus round two is an error, we want to return a specific value. In this scenario, let's return zero. I'll then click OK. We now have a solution column where if we have text in either round one or round two, our try and otherwise combination handles that error and returns the value that we have requested, which is zero. So that is how we can use the try and otherwise combination to handle errors in the right way. If we use the available columns list in the dialog box, we can get any values from the same row. 
However, we're not limited to these values. By using some basic referencing, we can get any values from any table. We're now back in Power Query and we have a column called score. And we just want to calculate the percentage that each value is of the total. So I'll go to Add Column and Custom Column. Let's give our column the name of percentage of total. And now let's create our formula. We already have our score, but to perform this calculation, we also need to know the total score. We can't see that inside our available columns. Instead, we're going to write the code ourselves. If we look in the Applied Steps window, we can see that the previous step name is source. Let's enter that. Now I'll click OK. In our column, we now have a table. If we click in that table, we can see that this is now everything that existed in our source table. Next, we just want to get our score column. Let's edit our custom column. And after our table reference of source, we want the column name. In square brackets, I will enter score. I'll then click OK. We now have a list. If we look in there, we have just the values from that column. Let's edit our custom column again. And this time we're going to use a function, list.sum. I'll close the bracket at the end. I'll click OK. And now the total is 72. That is the total of all of the score values, which means we can edit our custom column one more time. And we want to have our score divided by the list.sum of our source table and our score column. I'll click OK, and that gives us the percentage values. Let's change our data type so that this becomes a percentage. And now we have the result that we want, which means by using basic referencing, we are not restricted to just the items in the available columns list. Often when we use the custom column dialog box, we may need to create more complex calculations. So to break down that calculation into manageable parts, we can use the let and in combination. Here we are back in Power Query and we have the same data as our previous example. What we want to calculate is the number of points required for somebody to match the existing leader. I'll go to Add Column and select Custom Column. And let's call this Required Points. Now for our formula, it won't be any more complex than our previous example, but we want to show how we can use the let and in combination to simplify any calculation. Therefore, I'm going to start with let. This turns blue because it is a keyword. Unfortunately, the IntelliSense pops up, so I will press Escape to remove that, and then I'll press Enter to create a new line. We're now going to create our own identifier name, which is going to be source list. And for this, just as we saw in our previous example, we want to use our source table, and we want the score column we know that that will give us a list of just the scores. At the end of that line, I'll enter a comma, and then I can press return and create another new line. Let's add another name of max score. And this will be equal to the list.max that will return the maximum value from our source list. Source list is the identifier name that we created in our previous row. I'll enter a comma, at the end of that line, I'll press Enter to create a new line. And now let's add a new name of difference. And this is going to be equal to our max score minus our score. You'll notice max score is the name of our previous row and score is the value from each row in our table. Now, because this is the last row, we don't provide a comma. So I'll press Enter. And then we want to use the in keyword. You'll notice this word also turns blue to indicate that it is a keyword. The IntelliSense pops up. I'll press escape to avoid that. I'll then press enter one more time. And we now declare which value we want to return. 
we could return our source list, our max score or our difference. We want to return the difference. And now I'll click OK. And that gives us our required points score. The key point here is not about the calculation, but about the fact that we broke our calculation down into individual steps using the let and in combination. If we create our own custom column, it doesn't automatically apply a data type, but we don't have to add additional steps to apply a data type. Instead, we can make small changes to the M code and assign that data type in the same step as creating the column. We're now back in Power Query, and for this example, we have two custom columns that we have created. The first called Solution, and the second is a text calculation which gives us the initial and last name of each person. And you'll notice that we don't currently have data types for either of these columns. Now we could click on the data type icon and add a data type. For example, changing that into a number. However, we don't need to add this additional step. Let me delete that step. And now we're going to add the data type when we create our column. I'll go to our first added custom. Before the closing bracket of our table.addColumn function, I will add a comma. The IntelliSense now pops up, and this tells us that we have an additional argument called column type. And in here, we can declare what data type our column should be. For example, if we want a decimal number, we can enter type number. When we commit that, you can see that solution now displays a decimal data type. I'll then come to the next column and let's perform the same action. Before the closing bracket, I'll enter a comma and we want to enter our data type. Now the thing is that if we enter data types in this way, it doesn't convert the values in the column to that data type. Instead, we are merely telling Power Query that the values in this column are of that data type. Let's suggest here I use type number. Clearly our values are text. When we commit that, you will see that we have a number data type, but the column contains text. Therefore, although this step doesn't create an error, it could create errors later on in our process. So it's important that we do apply the correct data types. Let's edit our formula and we want to use type text. When we commit that, we now get the correct text data type. Because you might not know what code to enter for each data type, on the screen now you can see a list of the most popular data types and the codes that we would need to use. So that is how we can add data types at the same time as creating our custom column. And that's it, that's five tips and tricks for working with the custom column dialog box in Power Query. Now the truth is that these are all simple M code tweaks. So if you found these useful, your next step is to check out our Demystifying M in Power Query course. We released the course at the end of last year and we've seen loads of people finally understanding how Power Query really works. So head on over to excelofthegrid.com to find out more. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.